We have been discussing that we enter into all our interactions with one another with a deep need for love and acceptance. And in the Brothers Karamazov, we've been seeing how that leads into broken relationships. And now the novel is going to explore what it thinks is the worst kind of broken relationship, and that is wanton cruelty. Um, and it's going to propose a cure, um, and that is to be found in a properly aligned God relationship. So Dostoevsky is actually going to show us um, through the course of the novel that he thinks uh, a properly aligned God relationship actually looks like forgiveness. And that when we can receive the forgiveness offered by God and then imitate that offer by extending it to others, that we bring our broken human relationships back into alignment. And that can even be a cure for cruelty. So the way Dostoevsky frames this question is to uh, put it in the mouth of the middle brother, Ivan. And it is in the chapters in the novel before um, and including the chapter called The Grand Inquisitor. So what we have is this middle brother, Ivan, wrestling with this problem of cruelty. And he um, is speaking with his younger brother, Alyosha, and he's telling him that, you know, he has no problem with accepting that God exists. That's fine with him. But what he doesn't accept is the way the world works, this world that God created, because in it, he sees these worst excesses of human behavior. And he gives very specific examples. So he gives examples of um, evil being perpetual, per committed against the most innocent of all victims because he thinks that's the best way to make his case. So he describes, for example, a, a five-year-old girl being abused and victimized by her parents who hate her. They flog her. Um, they lock her in an outhouse on a freezing cold night because she soiled her bed. They rub excrement over her face and into her mouth. And Ivan imagines the prayer of that little girl shivering in the outhouse for God's protection and he doesn't understand why that prayer doesn't get answered. He uh, doesn't think there's any good excuse for a world to exist that permits that kind of evil. And he knows all the arguments that are always given um, by religious people um, that you know God's ways aren't our ways, we'll understand it all at the end of time, that suffering is here for a purpose, to teach us things, that um, oh, we couldn't know good if there wasn't evil in the world, and that of course the big one is that God gave us all free will, which means if we have free choice, then we're free to be cruel to one another. And Ivan says that He'd like us to all um, give those reasons to the face of that little girl who's suffering and because he can't do it. He, he doesn't think there's any justification for it. And he tells another um, story from the darkest days of serfdom when an eight-year-old boy accidentally wounds the paw of the landowners, who's a general, of the general's um, favorite hunting dog. And in retaliation, the general has the boy stripped and um, chased by the hounds and allows the hounds to tear the boy to shreds before his mother's eyes. And so um, after telling that story, Ivan asks Alyosha, what does he think should be done with the general? And Alyosha, his first response is to say, shoot him. And Ivan says, well, there's my point. Even a fine monk like you 
cannot escape returning cruelty for cruelty. You, even you, can't forgive. And, you know, Alio, she says, I didn't mean it, uh, you know, it was an absurd answer, but I, Ivan says it's not, it wasn't absurd at all. Um, and they began to talk about the fact that forgiveness has been offered already, even to the general, by uh, Christ. And um, again, Ivan says, well, that's all well and good, but can the child ever forgive that general? Can the mother? Would it be the mother who then demonstrates that forgiveness? in this world to the general, and Ivan is horrified by the prospect. He doesn't want the mother to forgive him. He thinks the general should be shot. Um, and he would be horrified if the, he's as horrified by the thought that the general would be forgiven as he is by the cruelty to the child. So he is in a bind. And, and Ivan, you'll see through the rest of the novel, is. Um, is tortured to the point of insanity uh, about this issue of what is our responsibility to one another and and how much are we responsible for the cruelty that exists in the world. Um, so Ivan frames this all, uh, this his uh, philosophical arguments um, in this prose poem that it, he calls the Grand Inquisitor, and in it a cardinal from the Inquisition. Um, is presiding over the burning of heretics. And during this scene, um, a, a figure comes into the town square and begins healing people and performing miracles and raising a child from the dead. And um, the cardinal knows that it's Christ and all the people are starting to gather around him. And so the, the, grand, the cardinal inquisitor has this Christ figure, this a reappearance of Jesus arrested and thrown in prison and he goes to him in and in, in the night and um, questions what the heck are you doing here you know you already had your say you set the world in motion you gave us everything is um, running according to your plans um, so um, you don't belong here anymore and besides which I, the Grand Inquisitor, have made things better. I have fixed the mess that you left us. You gave us free will, which was a very unwise thing to do. We're not capable of it. We will always make bad choices, so I, the Grand Inquisitor, will be the benevolent dictator. I will take care of people's problems. I will um, give them bread, and um, shelter and make everything peaceful for them. Um, so he says, go away, I've got it taken care of. And he tells Jesus that he's going to be burned at the stake tomorrow. And Jesus' response, this is all within Ivan's story, Jesus' response is to stand up and to kiss the Grand Inquisitor on the lips. It is um, the symbol of the offer of forgiveness and love. And the question, of course, is whether the Grand Inquisitor will receive that forgiveness and pass it on or not. Ivan says he does not. So Dostoevsky has now framed the question for the rest of the novel. Will the brothers learn to imitate the forgiveness of Christ, or will they imitate the hatred and cruelty of the world? and who they become and what their lives will look like will depend on the choice they make.